What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer, and in today's episode, we're going to be moving into the TAC rifle category and covering the Type 63. And first up, as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, which is very high. This is 6849, and what this means is the Type 63 is a 3 to 4 shot kill. Also, just like with almost every gun in the game, there are no body multipliers with this. However, we do have a standard headshot multiplier of 1.4, which takes our headshot damage profile to a 9568, and this is great. What this means is no matter what the range is, all it takes is one headshot mixed in with body shots to reduce the number of shots to kill. So up close, all you need is one shot to the body and one shot to the head, and you've got yourself a very, very fast kill. So headshots are incredibly effective with this gun, and you definitely want to try and mix those in whenever viable. As for our rate of fire, our base rate of fire potential is 361 rounds per minute. Keeping in mind this is a semi-auto, so it does depend on how good your trigger finger is. But something interesting with tactical rifles is various barrel attachments will change your rate of fire. So we have the rapid fire barrel, which will give us 389 rounds per minute. The strike team barrel, which gives us 400 rounds per minute. And then finally the titanium barrel, which is the fastest at 422 rounds per minute. And what this means is we do get different time to kill values depending on the barrel that we're using. But the main thing I wanted to point out is our base time to kill is 332 milliseconds, which isn't incredible by any means, but it is still within the range of being competitive. However, if we are using the titanium barrel, for instance, we get a 284 millisecond time to kill to the body, which is very fast. Also, this is without headshots. If we do get that two-shot kill, so one shot to the body, one shot to the head, without even using a barrel attachment, our time to kill potential is 166 milliseconds, which is ridiculously fast. But this brings us into our bullet velocity, which is the slowest out of the tactical rifle category at 625 meters per second. Now, this isn't terrible if we're comparing it to like assault rifles or SMGs, but another thing I want to point out, and I'm going to talk about this later, is there are very few barrel attachments that boost our bullet velocity, so that definitely holds this gun back. As for our ranges, they are kind of interesting with tactical rifles. If you look at the stated effective damage range for the Type 63, it's 50.8 meters. However, you'll notice on my graph here, it doesn't drop off to a 4-shot kill until about 63 meters. And the reason for this is there's a linear drop off. So at 50 meters, this is where it starts dropping off from 68 damage down to 49 damage. But unlike most guns where it immediately drops from 68 to 49, it actually does that gradually over distance. So we don't reach 49 damage until 63 meters and therefore that's our actual effective damage range. It's also kind of interesting with this gun, suppressors don't actually reduce our damage ranges at all, just our bullet velocity. And when we have a look at the barrels, there are two barrels that decrease our damage ranges, but these also boost our damage to the point where it's going to be a three shot kill at all range. So it's not really relevant that you reduce your damage range with that. And then we've got the other two barrels that will boost our damage range by 100%. Then of course, in hardcore game mode, this is a really high damage gun. So of course, this is going to be a one shot kill at all ranges. Next, when it comes to hip fire, the hip fire spread is the same as the other tactical rifles, but this is not a good hip fire spread. These actually have some of the widest hip fire spreads out of all of the guns in this game, and therefore, without attachments, hip firing is generally not very effective with the Type 63. After that, let's have a look at our idle sway, and as you can see here, there isn't a ton of idle sway. There's a little bit of movement while aiming down sight, but generally not something you have to be worried about. Then let's have a look at our recoil, which as you can see here, if we're looking at the actual recoil pattern on the wall, this gun is pinpoint accurate without any attachments on it. However, there is a ton of visual recoil. So it looks like the gun is kind of bouncing all over the place, but this is one of those situations where you just have to trust that the bullets are going to be pinpoint accurate on the center of your screen. It is also worth noting if you use one of the barrel attachments that boosts your rate of fire, that will also show up in your recoil pattern. You will get a wider recoil pattern because there will be less time for the gun to recenter between shots. Now, let's get into our handling stats. Our aim down sight time is 350 milliseconds, which is pretty slow. I would definitely recommend trying to boost that with attachments. And then our sprint out time is stated at 400 milliseconds. However, our experience sprint out time is really good at just 250 milliseconds. As for our reload add time, this is actually the fastest in the tactical rifle category at 1.74 seconds, but I don't consider that to be a fast reload. If you compare this to an assault rifle, for instance, this is a very slow reload time. And therefore, you may want to consider using one of these magazine attachments that will either boost your magazine capacity or speed up your reload time. And finally, for base stats, let's have a look at our movement speeds. Our base movement speed is 95%, which is the same as assault rifles and LMGs. And our sprint movement speed is actually pretty decent. It's 141%, which is much faster than LMGs and more along the lines of an assault rifle. 
Unfortunately for our aim down sight movement speed though, this is very slow at just 30%. So once you're aimed down sight, you are kind of locked in place with this gun. So with that, let's have a look at our overall strengths and weaknesses with the Type 63. The strengths are pretty obvious. The biggest strength this gun has in my mind is it's got an amazing headshot potential. Headshots are incredibly powerful with this gun and you definitely want to be going for them. Especially because its second big strength is it's extremely accurate. This thing is pinpoint accurate, which is great. And on top of this, our default range value is also very solid, at least for the regular multiplayer maps. As for the weaknesses though, our base time to kill if we're not getting headshots, it isn't amazing by any means. Like I said, it's not a bad time to kill, but you're often going to be beat out by other guns if you're just going for body shots. Also, it's really hard to boost bullet velocity with this. Like I said, the base bullet velocity isn't that bad, but compared to the assault rifles, for instance, you have far fewer options for boosting that bullet velocity, and that will hold you back at longer ranges. And then finally, just like with all of the tactical rifles, our hip fire is pretty terrible with this gun. It's not really viable unless you're using a hip fire attachment. But finally, before we get into the attachment combinations and example class setups, let's have a look at the two barrels that boost our damage, and these are the Task Force and the Strike Team Barrel. With these, our new damage profile is 7453, and what this means is at any range now, it's going to be a three-shot kill anywhere in the body. And this means even though both of these reduce our damage ranges, it's not really relevant because now it's always a three-shot kill. So overall, depending on what you're going for with your class setup, these are great choices. And with that, it's finally time to move into some great attachment combinations and example class setups. And the first combination I've got for you guys here, this is more for an aggressive build. This isn't designed for like sitting way back on the map and trying to pick people off at range, although you can still do that if you really want to. This one is more designed for aggression though. So with this, we got the millstop reflex for our optic, because I don't really like the iron sights on this, and also having an optic on this gun really seems to cut down on that visual recoil. Then we've got a standard silencer, the titanium barrel, so we can get the fastest possible fire rate on this. However, when you do this, it does technically increase our recoil, and therefore I also added the Spetsnaz grip, which will give us a super accurate gun, as you can see here. There is almost no recoil whatsoever with this setup, which is awesome. But finally, for attachments on this, we've got the GRU elastic wrap, which gives us a significant boost to our aim down sight time. And you can see all the stats on the side here. We've got great stats aside from our range and velocity, which like I said, this isn't designed for hanging back and picking people off at really long ranges. This is designed for fighting a little bit more up close and personal. As for our second class setup, this one is designed more so for hanging back and picking people off, although you can be somewhat aggressive with it as well since we have so many attachments because we're using the gunfighter wildcard here. So with this, you're using the Cobra Red Dot, which gives us a bit more zoom than the mill stop, so it helps us more at those longer ranges. We've got the Muzzle Brake, mainly because I didn't want to reduce our bullet velocity with a suppressor, but also because it helps with our vertical recoil control, which we need because I'm also using the Task Force Barrel here, which does give us a noticeable increase to our vertical and horizontal recoil. However, it's always going to be a three-shot kill now, and this is also one of the few ways of boosting our bullet velocity, which is necessary for really long-range fights. But after that, we've got the 5 milliwatt laser, just to make it so our hip fire isn't completely terrible. The taped mags, which gives us a faster reload without sacrificing our aim down sight time at all, which is nice. Then we're once again using the Spetsnaz grip also to counter that task force barrel, which we can have a look at our recoil pattern right here. And once again, you can see that this is basically pinpoint accurate. If we weren't using this Spetsnaz grip and the muzzle brake, you would be noticing a much less accurate gun due to that task force barrel. So those are kind of required to pair with the task force, in my opinion. But finally for this, we have the Elastic Wrap and the Raider Stock. The Raider Stock is nice just to allow us to strafe a little bit faster in gunfights, which can help us dodge shots, especially at really long ranges. And with this, you can see our range value is great. Not that it really matters since it's always a three-shot kill. Our velocity is pretty much as good as it's going to get. And our sprint out and aim down sight time are both reasonable too. So this is a really nice setup, more so for picking people off at longer ranges. It is usable up close, but it's more designed for longer range. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the Type 63. As for my thoughts on this gun, I think it's extremely underrated. I almost never see people using the Type 63, and yet this gun has a ton of amazing potential, especially if you're capable of landing just one headshot mixed in with a body shot, which isn't that difficult due to how accurate this gun is. Of course, that is just my opinion. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about the Type 63 in Cold War's multiplayer? Do you agree with me and think that the gun is a little bit underrated? Or do you feel like it's just not that great? Just let me know those thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.